It's time for another edition of Locked on Kings, where we talk about how all of our small sons have disappointed us. We're going to talk about that on today's episode of Locked on Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to Locked On Los Angeles Kings or watching it on the YouTube. My name is Sarah, host of this show. As always, glad to be here with you on today's show, which is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. This is another edition of Mini Kings Monday here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings. And we're going to be talking all about our favorite or least favorite Mini Kings on today's show with special guest as always friend of the program jay foster locked on blue jackets covering the rain elsewhere enjoying or not enjoying or being confused by our terrible sons the los angeles kings and the ontario rain the rain they'll get a reprieve because they pull they it out <laughs> they, yeah they like for, for what they, they get to live for one more day because they actually pulled out a win against stockton which was very like fun and satisfying and good but uh, the Kings have decided that they have had enough of being good and fun and like adequate as a hockey team. They weathered like the 400 injuries to their team. Like Drew Doughty hasn't played in like six months or something like that. It seems like, and they've been like, you know, making it happen. And then they decided that they were done. They don't, they don't want to, they don't want to play anymore because that's what it looks like. The way they're playing right now looks like they want to be done at the end of April with, you know, all the other bad teams instead of going for the playoffs because they just let in what, like six unanswered goals to the Minnesota wild. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I fell asleep when that game was three, nothing Kings. I mean, that was a good plan. And the, yeah, I was like, surely they can't, surely, surely they can't ruin this. Yeah. And the, they just they they really so proved me wrong. I uh, yeah. I was thinking about this. I think we should change from Mini Kings Monday to uh, Murder Kings Monday, where we yeah. just talk about which of the kings and the rain the goldies should get to murder. Um, all of them. Because honestly, it's yeah, it's all of them. Uh, Jared Anderson Dolan can live. Yeah. Um, Trevor Moore gets to live. Yeah. Because he's the only person in the in the organization that could score shot-headed goals, apparently, and uh, that's. Kind of That's about it. I would like yeah. to make an argument that TJ Tynan gets to live, not because he did anything, but just because I love him. So right. <laughs> those are, those are yeah. the, the kings in the rain that, that get to survive the yeah. goalie murder. Yeah. And so like the kings, yeah, like I I was covering an AHL game that night. So I, you know, was kind of in and out. And I too was like, oh, look, they're up three nothing. I even made like a snarky tweet that was like, I love Mark Andre Fleury, <laughs> but I love what's happening in this game even more when the kings were up three nothing. Um, and then it's so like, yeah, like take a long, take a long drink of water, and then let's see what happens. <laughs> and I, you know, came back from having to pay attention to my other game and was like, wait, you did, you did what? Like it was three two at one point when I went into like, you know, intermission in the game I was covering, and I was like, ah, that, that's you know, that sucks, but whatever. Um, and then I blinked, and then it was. And so did the entirety of the LA Kings. Yeah, family. and it's it's super frustrating because it's like what happened like wh why do they do this <laughs> why are they I like think, this <laughs> like partially i think it's because they're all babies like all of the the adults are either mm -hmm. gone or broken it's mostly just like andre kopitar and jonathan quick and some children and <laughs> i think it's it's fatigue like i've been seeing this yeah. lot with the blue jackets this season is there's a lot of them that haven't played mm -hmm. a full a full 82 games yeah and yeah um, you know they're, they're tired they need a nap uh to continue my my toddler metaphor that i think i started um <laughs> last week my um <laughs> people watching this on youtube my desk chair has a we has a broken wheel so every so often if i lean the wrong way <laughs> i just it's fine it happened while i was holding water earlier and it was bad anyway <laughs> um the, the the this could actually like spiral off into a whole other thing which is i think the 82 games is too long yeah. for a season 
Um, and this is something I think a couple of B writers have been talking about for a while. I know mm-hmm. Mark Lazarus is very, very vocal about the, mm-hmm. uh, what is it, a 60, a 64 game season, yeah. I think he wants, which I would be okay with. I, it could run for maybe a couple of weeks shorter, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. be mad about them having more time off between games. Right. Um, you know, so I think it is, it's partially, I think that they're all children and partially that the Kings are doing that thing where they're like, oh no, we're being perceived. Yeah. Pay no attention Not. to the, to the cocky team behind the curtain, you know? Right. Like, oh no, like they're me. They're, they're, they get scared whenever someone's looking at them and they're like, yeah, oh. If they just stand still then no one can see them, you know? Right. I do unfortunately, think- if they stand still, then Kirill Kaprizov can just kind of do what he wants because- Gosh, yeah. They turn into pylons. Of course he does. Um. I think the fatigue thing is a really good point that I didn't even think of because, you know, regardless of if it's the kids, if it's the veterans, two seasons in a row now have been short because of COVID stuff. And so even your veteran players who are used to the grind have now had two seasons of not grinding. And especially for the Kings who haven't seen the postseason in forever, like, yeah, this is you're... the most hockey that a lot of them have played. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, that's, you know, the, the vets, okay, yeah, they, they know how to handle it. But also, you know, it's, I think when you hit, you know, when you start getting past 30, like, mm-hmm. your body is just unhappy about the amount yeah. of hockey that you have to play, you know, and you really have to start, that's when, you know, the the maintenance days start. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think, uh, again, to go back to the blue records, Jake Voracek had one a couple of days ago and I'm like yeah because he's a million years old and he's one of like <laughs> he's one of the only players to play most of the season yeah um, you know like it's 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 a it is a tough tough sport to play so many games of you know like baseball has about 700 games in a season I think but it's not <laughs> that nearly intense I don't think you know and then you yeah. look at the flip side the NFL which has like four games a season or yeah. something um yeah you know, it's 82 games is is a lot, especially mm-hmm. for the top minute guys. You yeah. Know? And with Drew Doughty being out and uh, Mikey Anderson missing a bunch of time, mm-hmm. Matt Roy missing a bunch of time. I assume that Sean Dursey, I haven't looked at his ice time, but I assume that like Sean Dursey is playing about 35 minutes a game <laughs> because who else is there? You know, right. Like no one. And and there, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit in the next segment, but I feel like if we're talking about players hitting a wall, like Sean Dursey is hitting his wall at the exact wrong time. Um, and I think Which it's again, is understandable. Time. Like, right. It, it's understandable. It's he wasn't first supposed NHL to season. It. Yeah. It's, he's a child uh, yeah. and he's playing uh, 21 and a half minutes. He played against, uh, against Minnesota, which I believe is good for the most on the team. Of course. Yeah. And he played like, uh, no, Matt Roy minutes. played 22 like, and a half. And like then it crazy. was Jersey. <laughs> so we'll what talk about Jordan Spence. Oh, <laughs> his team is full of children. He's so he's so small and young. Jordan Spence is an actual baby as well. He like is. He I is. feel like Sean Dursey is uh, like his first NHL season, but isn't he like 24, 25? 23, close enough. Okay, yes, yeah, so he's yeah. like an actual adult. Jordan Spence is a baby. I think he yeah, like he can't even drink yet, right? He should not be, like... he should not be third on the team at ice time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> It's fine. Everything's fine. We'll talk a little bit more about Sean Dursey because the internet's got a lot of feelings about him lately. Uh, We'll talk about that coming up right after this. But first, let's talk about a great way to keep yourself healthy, to get yourself more energy. So whenever you have to maybe play like 28 minutes a night in a hockey game, you know that you'll be set for like being able to do it. Uh, So basically, if you're someone who is looking for ways to stay healthy and you don't want to have to sit around and like meal plan or like count macros or all things that are really hard, you can go and check out uh, AG1. It's from Athletic Greens. It is a product that'll give you high quality vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and much more to help you start your day out right. If you are not into taking pills or vitamins, if you are just like really bad at remembering that stuff and you just want like a delicious, like kind of dark chocolatey flavored smoothie to start your mornings off with, Athletic Greens is there to get your day started. So you can go and check it out. It is lifestyle friendly. So if you're doing the keto diet, if you're paleo, if you're a vegan, whatever it is, uh, it will fit in your diet, in your lifestyle. It supports things like sleep quality and recovery and mental clarity. I sure could use some sleep quality. 
uh, improvement as well. So I, I definitely should be checking a look, taking a look at this. Uh, and it's basically just a great way to take care of yourself. It is uh, simple to use and they do lots of great work in the community as well. Uh, they do things like offset their carbon usage and they also provide meals to kids in need with no kid hungry here in the United States. So go and check it out. It is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop of water. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day and that is it. There's not a million different pills or supplements. It is one easy uh, step. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So Sean Dersey could probably use this to like recover from the 8 billion minutes of hockey he has to play. And like, I'm versed enough in analytics to be dangerous, which is to say I kind of understand them, but like, you know, not enough. But if you look at like any of Sean Dersey's fancy stats, they have been like cratering lately. Um, and I, I think that the, the conventional wisdom of the internet at large, all of you out there listening or watching to this show, is kind of pinning it on two things. And one is the fatigue factor of he is playing way more minutes in a much more higher profile role than like maybe he is quite ready for. Um, and B, he has unfortunately been paired with the uh, team's newest whipping boy. We've all accepted Olimata as like adequate now. Um, but now everyone would like to fire Tobias Bjornfoot into the sun, um, which I can't, I wouldn't fire him into the sun necessarily. But he also I mean, hasn't. Again, speaking of young defensemen, right? You know, Tobias Bjornfoot is, I think, one of the older children, but still mm -hmm. ultimately a child. Yeah. So maybe find some chill, Kings fans. <laughs> like it's going to be okay. I promise. Uh, we yeah. don't have to like ritually crucify Tobias right. Bjornfoot. Yeah, and I think that he like. I mean, he's having the same problem that everyone on this team is having, which is that they're all having to play up more than they should. Like, whenever the Kings drafted Tobias Bjornfoot, and I know that, like, a lot of people thought he was kind of a reach at the time, like, maybe he shouldn't have been drafted quite so high, but the Kings really liked him, um, largely for, like, th this was very much a, like, if Dean Lombardi was still running this team, this would have been, like, a Dean Lombardi pick, because a lot of the things that you heard about him were less about his skill as a defenseman and more about, like, his character, his leadership. He'd been a really important factor for Team Sweden, uh, for like World Juniors and all of the like youth Team Sweden stuff. Um, and has just really been well regarded as a potential leader. But no one has ever looked at him, even when he was drafted and said like, this is your first pairing defenseman. Like that's not who he is. That's not his role. And yeah, I think unfortunately he is kind of like, I, I always kind of hate the like, and Todd McClellan just kind of did this with Arthur Kaliev, which kind of irritates me a little bit. The like, we're going to sit you down for one game as a reset, which like I get it, but also it's annoying, but also I get it because sometimes you do just need to like take that step back and watch the game from the press box or whatever and step outside of your own game. But I like, I wouldn't be mad if they kind of were, were like, okay, Toby, like let's sit this one out. Let's watch the game. Let's talk about it um and go from there um Dursey's numbers with and without beer and foot like there's a huge difference which which is why I think a lot of people are kind of like hinging onto that because without beer and foot he's like up here and then with him it's like hmm, down here like it's, it's frustrating because none of them should be in this position and unfortunately everyone is dead yeah that's the thing like and it's it, like you say it's easy to criticize beyond foot for being like he's he's a bad player and he's not he's just playing above his level and there's nothing wrong with that and i think that's why i'm not super about this idea of we're gonna make him sit down because yeah. i don't think he's making mistakes necessarily he's just i think it, it's very much a case of he's trying to do things he hasn't quite got the skill level to do because mm -hmm. of who he's facing yeah. 
You know, he is, he is a guy that could really, and we've seen like flashes of this, this season. Mm -hmm. um, he's a guy that could really benefit from some more sheltered yeah. minutes, which unfortunately he's just not going to get because I think he's right. de facto like the third oldest yeah. defenseman on the Kings which right now. So um, but I also think, and again, it's it, we talked about him being young. Uh, this is his third season with the Kings. Mm -hmm. He played three games in his first season. He played 33 games in his second season. And so he's up to 69 games in this season, nice. you know, like, thanks. Uh, it's, this is by far the most games he's ever played yeah. in a season. So I'm not surprised. Like when you get tired, you start doing stupid things. I do stupid yeah. things all the time. It's because right. I'm always tired, you yeah. know? Um, and so, yeah, I think it's, it's easy to look at, at that and be like, well, Tobias Bjornfoot is the reason that Sean Dursey is not playing great. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, Tobias Bjornfoot is uh, not necessarily being put in a position to succeed. And yeah. I don't think that's a deliberate thing by Todd. I don't think that's Todd McCollum being like, I'll show him <laughs> twirling his mustache. You know? <laughs> it's just that uh, all of our defensemen are dead. Yeah. And yeah. He, he has to play where he is because otherwise, it, I mean, the, the who else is there? There's Troy Stetcher. There's right. Yeah. Like, There's nobody. Yeah. yeah. And like, at least like Matt Roy is back. Um, mm -hmm. You can tell he's kind of getting back up to speed. They sort of just threw him back in there. Uh, but, minutes, yeah. like, yeah, like, just shove him in there. Um, Blake Lazat came back in, which at least kind of helps the forwards out. Um, Brendan Lemieux exists. I mean, I would argue that putting him back on the team is actively a detriment to the team's success yeah. as a whole. But, like, we don't need another... 40 minute episode of me yelling about <laughs> Brendan Lemieux and why there are other better options. Yeah. But I, when, I, when I saw the tweet, they were like, Matt Roy's been activated from injured reserve. And so is Brendan Lemieux. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And like, Lemieux, I mean, it's a whole, yeah, again, like, we don't need the whole other episode about it. But like, he also has not done good in the game that they shoved him back in. Like, they could have waited. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate that they seem like they're hitting the wall now because like the playoffs are so close like they like we can taste them and it's like you know that if they don't step out of this skid that you know Vegas Edmonton are both like well I think Edmonton's above us now but like Edmonton is I think three yeah. points above or they were yeah. before the game last night I don't know if yeah last yeah night, and so like but, yeah Vegas yeah. is like breathing down our necks the last thing you like, it's like if you're gonna get in that wild spot, wild card spot, you might as well not even be there. <laughs> like, yeah. However, like, I do think that this is. I don't know. It's weird. I I kind of basically, and I think you kind of had the same thought. You went into the season with basically no expectations. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, they might be better than last season, but I'm not necessarily expecting them to make the playoffs. And if they did, it's only because the Pacific right. Division is an on fire trash can, mm -hmm. which we've kind of scene you know so yeah. the, the kings have kind of been playing with house money yeah. this season and when i looked at the standings a couple of weeks ago and was like holy crap they're in second place in the pacific like i guess that mm -hmm. makes sense because again pacific is doo-doo but they've slipped below edmonton obviously vegas is right there i don't think they're in mm -hmm. danger of slipping out of the playoffs yeah. so i think even if they lose in the first round right i'm still willing to call this season a success you finally yeah. got quentin byfield to to like stick in the NHL. Obviously, mm -hmm. Sean Dursey has been a massive, massive boon to this team. Uh, Brock Faber's probably on his way. Exists. As we speak. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. He might have been so embarrassed by that game last night that he might have been like, maybe I'll just stay in college in a year. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was also worried about that with Ken Johnson and the Blue Jackets because he was at the Blue Jackets <laughs> game where they almost lost to the Red Wings. But I digress. <laughs> um, you know, like the Kings are. The kick is fine. Yeah, I think. they're, they're going the right way this season. Yeah. They've made a step in the right direction, and I think that's and that's something that I am guilty of in mm -hmm. in terms of being a hockey fan, and it's something that I've had to try and tone down as I've started to kind of, like transition into being a more serious hockey reporter, or you know mm -hmm. whatever you want to say about my stupid podcast where I yell about <laughs> how Patrick Laine <laughs> is a greyhound in the snood or whatever. But the sky is not falling. It is not all or nothing unless you're the Maple Leafs in game seven. <laughs> you know, it's it's <laughs> taking a step in the right direction. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's it's easy to see 
not winning the cup as an ab- an abject failure. Mm-hmm. Like the season, if you don't win the Stanley Cup, the season is a failure. And I think there are there are some teams where that's the case. Tampa Bay, for example. Yeah. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche. I feel like last year especially was tough for them because they mm-hmm. were the favorite, the heavy favorites going in, and then obviously Vegas kind of took their lunch money a little bit, and then obviously the Canadians did what the Canadians somehow did. Um, <laughs> Obviously, it was, a, it was considered a failure for the Maple Leafs, but I'm not going into this playoffs yeah. thinking, man, if the Kings don't win the cup, burn it down, fire everyone, like right. send Rob Blake to the sun, you know, put Todd yeah. McClellan back in Edmonton. That's all he deserves, you know? Gosh. It's, it's, even with yeah. this Ross play as of late, I'm still proud. Of, of the, the way that this yeah. season has gone, I think you know. I think um, the the goaltending has been good. The defense has done its best in a very very cursed year. The <laughs> like the the f- emergence of of Adrian Kempe, like a beautiful butterfly from his chrysalis of being a center. You know, he's figured out how to score goals. Quentin yeah. Byfield has been just so much fun to watch. You know, the yeah. um, Dravidson, Phil Dano. Like, there's been so much to like about this Kings team that. Even if they lose in the first round, which, you know, even if they get swept by Edmonton, which is oh. kind of, I think that's shaping up to be the the first round match. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, I'm still pretty happy with how the season has gone. Yeah. And I think the organization will be as well when you consider where they were. Yeah. You know, right. this time last year, they were mm-hmm. fixing to pick eighth overall yeah. in, the, in the draft, you know, and now yeah. they're potentially, uh, the, you know, the second or third seed in the in the division so you know it's yeah it's progress i don't remember what my original point was in this big long <laughs> diatribe but i think mostly it's chill chill this season is not a failure if they lose the playoffs i think even like they, they could get fully embarrassed by edmonton and i'm still considering this play this season yeah. a success yeah yeah it is part of the trajectory that they need to be on and then I mean, one one last thought before we take a break and then come back to talk about the rain. Looking at the Kings' schedule the rest of this month, they play one team that is in the playoffs. They play Colorado, which, like, I feel like anytime you're playing the Avalanche, it's a scheduled loss. You're just going to lose that game. Off, yeah. But, like, they play Chicago twice, the Ducks twice. They play the Blue Jackets, Seattle, and Vancouver. Like, you should, they should be able to... Like, I, I know that Kings fans were like, we're all kind of like down. We're like, the sky is falling. Everything is horrible. This team's never going to win another game. And like, I get it that you experience success for like a hot minute and then it stops. You and you're like, oh, act. yeah, I have done right, I I the this season with the Blue Jackets when they won mm-hmm. like seven, they went seven, three to start the season. I was like, oh my God, we're winning the cup. This is incredible. And <laughs> it's going to score 85 goals this season, yeah. you know? And I think it's, it's, yeah, people, people, the team gets hot. And people kind of forget how to act. And I think that's a, that's a, a hockey thing. That's a sport yeah. thing, I think. You know, I'm yeah. not versed in other sports, but it's a very reactionary thing to take momentary success and be like, well, this is how it's going to be for the next forever. Right. And you think that's something that maybe applies more to teams like the Kings, who mm-hmm. some of their older fans will obviously remember, you know, the the 20... 20- Mm-hmm. 2011 to 2015 ish years mm-hmm. when life was good and the playoffs existed, you know. So, but my point here is, I think that this is fine. They're playing with house yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Chill. Next season, they're probably going to be better. Yeah, you know. Exactly. I think that's great. So we'll we'll look at the rain next. Because they at least have already clinched a playoff spot, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, We'll talk about them in just a second, but I think first you have some cool things to tell me about. Uh, Yeah, I mean, if uh, let's talk about sports betting, because uh, honestly, I would put money on the Kings making the playoffs. I don't know that I would put money on the Kings making it past the first round necessarily, playing like they are right now. But I know where I would go if I wanted to put money on that thing. That is BetOnline.net. Bet online is your number one source for all your spelling sets and sports information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, uh, including things like this year's basketball playoffs, which I think starts soon. Uh, the baseball season started the other week, and I don't baseball, but uh, people are very excited about that, so you can put money on that. 
Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, uh, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. They've got, like I said, they've got baseball, they've got basketball, they've got hockey, they've got UFC, they've got boxing, they've got Vegas casino games. They've got, I believe, like Overwatch League is still a thing. You can bet on oh, that, gosh. I'm pretty sure. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action because Bet Online is where the game starts. And I've also got to tell you about Bill Bar because it's the morning, you've just had your athletic greens, and now you need a delicious balanced breakfast to follow that up. So why not grab a Bilt Bar? Bilt Bars are Basically, I think they're the best tasting protein bar that I've ever had. You know, you get these gas station protein bars. The they taste like to, the mint tastes like toothpaste, and oh. they're kind of chalky and gross. And it feels like you're being punished for trying to be healthy. Built Bar is not like that. Built Bar is delicious. It is nutritious, covered in 100% real chocolate. And if you haven't tried the Built Puffs, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars because Built Puffs are a protein infused marshmallow ton of incredible flavors they've got churro they've got coconut they've got banana cream pie uh they've just got brownie batter built puffs which brownie batter flavored marshmallows sounds like exactly my kind of thing like yeah. that sounds good as hell and here's the best bit about built bar about built bar though if you go to built.com use promo code locked 15 you can get 15 percent off your order of delicious nutritious chocolate covered Brownie batter, marshmallow, deliciousness. Once again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, let's wrap up today's show by looking at the Mini Kings, the Ontario Reign, who finally pulled out a win over their uh, current nemesis, the Stockton Heat. Uh, this game was... Well, my text to someone who was working at the game was, this game is drunk, because it was drunk. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. I feel like every time, and I, I think I slept through most of this game as well, because it was a, a silly time for me. Yeah. But, uh, man, I feel like every, t every time it was like, Stockton scores, and the rain score. Yes. Stockton scores again. And yeah. Martin Fleck does the thing. And it, just, <laughs> it went back and forth, back and forth. The the rain managed to get the shootout win. But man, they made it hard work. They so hard. super made it hard work. And I don't know if they've been watching the Kings and are like, hey, we should we should try and emulate Big Brother, you know? Like, no. In the bad don't way. Do that. Don't do what the Kings do. You're doing yeah. great by yourself. Be your own person, brain. Like, man. Yeah. Shots in that one were 40 to 34 in favor of Stockton. So automatically Monkeys. they owe Matt Villalta money. Monkeys held Matt Villalta. Right. Um, the rain did, you know, they can't, this is a, like, I feel like all season long, except for this kind of rough spell they've had lately. When I watch the rain, even when they get down, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? They can come back from this. And lately it's been like, mm, maybe they can't. Um, but this game, they were down three, nothing. Um, midway through the second period, Austin Wagner got things started uh, late in the second. And then the third period is where like basically all of the goals exploded. Um, Samuel Fagimo scored at the beginning of the period. Akil Thomas scored on the power play to tie the game up, which was fun and exciting, especially knowing like Akil Thomas has like, he was injured and that like, it's just been a really tough season for him. Um, this is his fourth goal of the year. He didn't score his first goal until fairly recently. Um, so it's good to see him kind of getting back into the swing of things. Um, he scored about three minutes later. Um, the heat, the, the heat scored to take the lead again. And then Martin Furk, like you said, like literally 13 seconds later, Martin Furk scored to tie the game again. It was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> the 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 Heat scored a power play goal on the Martin Furk penalty, and yeah. I think he took it personally because he literally must have come out of the box and being like, "Right, okay, sorry guys." Yeah. Now watch this. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That. That. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um. I love Martin Furk. Um, he's the best. <laughs> he's just. He, like I would step away from like if I saw him, I would just get out of his way. I'd be like, <laughs> "Have fun, toodles." Like go go hit that puck somewhere. Um, yeah, so he ties the one. game, like he ties the game up and you're like, okay, you've still got, you know, what, six, seven minutes left, but you're like, all right, that's fine. It's fine. We'll get to overtime. And then the heat scored again, like three minutes after Ferg's goal. 
and you're like, oh God, here we go. Like you're going to lose this one. And then, and then a minute later, less than a minute later, after the Heat scored to, to take the lead again, Taylor Ward, who the Kings signed to, to a one-year deal, he's on a, a amateur tryout right now with the rain. Uh, he scored like multiple points his first game. Uh, Taylor Ward got his first professional goal uh, to tie the game back up. He celebrated that goal like he had just won the playoffs. Like it was like visceral how excited he was. First goals are so good. But yeah, I saw that he'd scored and I did have a, a very kind of moment where I was like, who? <laughs> like I fully forgot the the <laughs> he was because I'm I think I'm so used to that top line just doing all of the scoring whenever mm-hmm. anyone else scores. Like Cameron Gaunt scored like two goals in three games a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, what is going on? But right, yeah, like, Taylor Ward I, I, has was more excited for that goal than anyone I've ever seen. It yeah. was extremely cute. We yeah. love first professional goals, and especially when they tie the game and then yeah. give us more hockey. Yeah, it was a great a great time to score your first goal. I just looked him up to see if he could be a tiny king, but he is apparently six two. Um, mm, no, so he's a, a large it's tiny a king. Baseball thing. Sorry, yeah, tiny. alas, he is kind of gingery though, which I feel like is important. Um, is but so he ties the game, which, like, honestly, at that point, even if the Kings had lost in overtime, or the King, even if the Rain had lost in overtime, I feel I still like I still would have been proud of them for having come back from that like from the three, nothing start uh, for battling back in that like ridiculous third period. Like I would have been like, all right, you know, Stockton is the best team in the division. Like one of, if not the best teams in the league, which is weird. And I don't like to say it. Um, The fact that they got to overtime at all, I think was really good. And then overtime was like similarly bonkers each, like each side, the goalies on both sides just made like crazy saves. And then of course it goes to the shootout. And um, Justin Kirkland, who scored twice for the Heat, uh, scored on the shootout for them as well. And per the broadcast, he basically has exactly one move that he makes when he does the shootout. Every shootout goal he has scored has been the exact same way. <laughs> and so, and I he can't respect scored, that, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he knows what he can do. I get it. Um, he has scored shootout goals on Matt Vallalta before. So I'm a little bit like, Y'all could have prepared for this a little bit. You knew yeah, you know one coming. move in his arsenal. You could have prepared for that, but whatever. Um, he's the only one who scored. Uh, Fagimo and Jared Anderson Dolan both scored uh, for the rain to give them the win. This is the most goals that Dustin Wolf has given up this season for Stockton. Uh, he has been phenomenal for them. Uh, he has not given up that many goals at all this year. So that's um, bonkers. I like I knew that yeah. Stockton were good and I knew that they've been good defensively, but I feel like Matt Valalta has gives up five goals every game. <laughs> which <laughs> which is in fairness to Matt Valalta, like the 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 rain allow a ton of shots, so his save yeah. percentage is actually decent. But I do feel like he always like he either allows one goal or six and there is no mm-hmm. real in between, which yeah. like Again, I kind of respect the chaos of of that kind of goaltending, but also mm-hmm. it's so stressful. Yeah, Dustin Wolf, he uh, he was actually uh, Field Pass Hockey did a like a fake AHL All Star game where we voted on people to go to the All Star game, and Dustin Wolf, Dustin Wolf was the first pick I made for yeah. players that were not on the rain. Uh, he's been phenomenal this season. Yeah, yeah, and Stockton has only lost two shootouts total all season. Um, I'm just so irritated that Stockton is good because they were so bad for so long. Um, yeah, and... now they've kind of figured it out. I think it is probably mostly goaltending. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at the the forwards, I don't, or like off the top of my head, like I don't know if they have any real like game breakers in the way that, like, Andrew Podorowski or mm-hmm. Stefan Nosen for Chicago are, for example. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they don't have a Martin Furk. No. <laughs> and they don't have a TJ Heinen, because he's yeah. ours. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I... Honestly, and I'm going to, again, <laughs> knock on wood before I say this, Stockton has real... Obviously, they've got a buy in the first round of, mm-hmm. of the playoffs. They've got real lose in, the se- in a heartbreaker in the second round energy. Um, yeah. And I don't I know who they're going to be playing. 
but that's the vibe I get, and that is the vibe that I am stick. Yeah. <clears throat> that is the vibe I get. That is the vibe I am sticking with. And if I am wrong, uh, my Twitter handle is right down here. So yeah, come on. Yeah, I'm into it. If the playoffs started today, Stockton, like we said, would have the bye. Um, it would be Ontario versus San Diego, Colorado versus Henderson, and Abbotsford versus Bakersfield. Um, and then they take the three winners from that first round, and then they reseed them, I believe. Uh, so who who knows? But right now we'd be playing the Gulls, which I don't want because no, I hate that. I I hate I hate everything. Let's, like yeah, I think if we write to the AHL commissioner, do you think, dear Mr. AHL commissioner? Yes, I would very much like it if we sent the Gulls to the moon. Yes, and let the the rain play the Colorado Eagles in the first round of the Calder Cup playoffs. Yes, yeah. or like Henderson Sincerely. or something like Love John Kings. Yeah, sincerely, us. Yeah, I think I think that could work. Um, we, we'll we'll try it because I don't want to play the Gulls. I don't. No. I no. I don't. I don't want that. It's the darkest timeline. Yeah, I'm also. I'm so tired of playing the Gulls because they're who like they they've been the Reigns playoff nemesis ever since like the AHL Pacific Division became a thing. Like I don't. Mm. I don't want this. I want something else. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. <laughs> No. Maybe that should be the letter that we send. Yes. Please no. Dear Mr. AHL Commissioner, please. Sincerely. No. Sincerely no. us. Yeah. So the Rain do have a handful of games left. Uh, they play, They play. speaking of the devil, they play San Diego twice, three times, three more times. Uh, they, play they play them, them a million times this season. Yeah. They play them Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And then we're Some done with them. To play San Diego. Yeah. I, it's probably like 14 or something. Um but so the rain do have some more action. Uh, so three times against San Diego, three times against Colorado on, on a road trip at the end of the month. And then they end their season uh, on the road against Henderson at the end of the month. So yeah, no gulls, seagulls. No, no. that's the more no scorpions, no, no gulls, no gulls. I like it. I like that's, it. Well, that's the list. That's the list. Well, it's a great list, and this has been a great discussion about all of our terrible sons. Uh, for people who want to hear from you about our your own terrible sons or whatever you're up to, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I say this at the end of every episode. I cannot in good conscience recommend paying attention to the Blue Jacket because all they'll do is hurt me, and all they will do is, is hurt you. But if you like teams that overachieve at the start of the season and then realize they're being perceived, and uh, if you like former NCAA players that have really pointy faces, then uh, Locked on Blue Jackets is the place for you. We're going to be talking about Ken Johnson and all of our other horrible pointy-faced Michigan children uh, over at Locked on Blue Jacket, LO underscore Blue Jackets on Twitter. Or if you would like me uh, yelling about all manner of things, uh, Blue Jackets, Monsters, Rain, uh, Kings, other sports, uh, dog pictures, uh, you can find that over at underscore Jacob Foster. If you are watching on YouTube, then it's right down here. Uh, and okay. if you are not, then good luck spelling it. Yeah, have fun. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Right Said Sarah. The show is on Twitter at Locked On LA Kings. And of course, all these things available wherever you get your podcasts and or your YouTubes. Make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend all about it. Because even if the Kings blow it, we've still got rain playoff hockey to talk about, which is going to be very exciting. Uh, and we'll have lots of rain content coming up. For you Honestly, the rain will probably do better than the Kings in the playoffs anyway. Yes. So, yes. And again, yeah. at risk of jinxing, but like, right. pay attention but, to the rain. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Statistically, it seems like it should be fine. Mm. So we'll have lots of AHL coverage. We'll turn into locked on rain as soon as the moment is appropriate. So thank you so much for listening. Come back tomorrow because we're going to talk all about how the Kings will probably blow it against the Blackhawks again. Uh, that's <laughs> tomorrow's show here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.